Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Monoclonality Assurance Using Clone Select Single Cell Printer and Clone Select Imager in Human Stem Cell Engineering Workflow. I am Michelle Ashton of Labroots, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is presented by Labroots and brought to you by Molecular Devices. To learn more, visit MolecularDevices.com. We encourage you to participate today by submitting any questions you may have during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click Send. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. You may also submit any technical issues here as well if you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation. This webinar is educational and thus offers free continuing education credits. Please click on the continuing education window at the bottom of your screen to obtain your credits. I'd like to now welcome our speaker, Gargi Roy, Scientist 2 at AstraZeneca on the stem cell therapy team in the Department of Bioprocess Development. Gargi, you may now begin your presentation. Thank you, Michelle, for the um, uh, introduction, and thank you to LabRoots and Molecular Devices for giving me this opportunity to talk about our work around monoclonality assurance using clone select single cell printer and clone select imager in human stem cell engineering workflow. So um, before I go into um, the, my presentation in the stem cell area, I thought I'll take a uh, you know brief moment and introduce myself um, to you regarding like the um, my background, uh, where I came from, how I um, transitioned into the stem cell um, workspace. So as a uh, um, scientist, my career grew in AstraZeneca around um, technology uh, evaluation for protein expression. So I, um, you know, uh, saw many aspects of it and published um, some of our data as well. It ranges from developing a reporter system for um, detecting um, ER stress in uh, Cho cells during IgG expression. We also um, dealt into um, validating the Glimax technology uh, developed by Probiogen for generating the affugosylated antibodies um, from Cho cells. And also very recently, our publication in MABS um, describes about um, development of a high yielding expression platform for the introduction of non-natural amino acids in protein sequences. So these are very diverse topics, as you can see, but there is one thing that is common in all of them, that is the high throughput screening. And that's what I bring in into the stem cell um, workspace. So um, um, before I go to the, um, you know, the next um, slide, which is, um, the um, it's it's about the um, there is a lag I'm seeing so that's why um, bear with me on that before it goes the slide goes live but anyway I will be talking about um, this piece of work that we published a few years ago that came out in Journal of Immunological Methods it's from a live campaign and we gave um, you know a commercial viability to a product. Um, by increasing the uh, productivity by almost twofold using the strength of CLONPIXFL. This is the publication where we also reported the monoclonality assessment offered by CLONPIXFL, and we reported that it takes about two rounds to, um, you know, uh, get a um, monoclonal cell line. And I'm glad that um, based on these findings, molecular devices redesigned their um, later um, generation um, clone peaks 
and that they added a um, you know um, imaging component to it. So that way, it, you can really uh, make sure that you are getting your clone coming out of a single cell. So it's just not that um, the reason I bring up um, this um, publication uh, to the context of stem cells that clone pixel was working as a workhorse for many years in my workflow. However, when I started working with the stem cells, before even I knew that how different these cell types can be. So I used um, the same technology and put out the cells on the semi-solid matrix. And um, I do not have an image to show you what I ended up with, but I realized that I need to think differently. And at that time, I'm talking about like in almost two and a half years ago when I transitioned into the stem cell um, field. So um, obviously, I you know now they have a machine designed for stem cells, but at that time we did not have anything in hand. So um, that starts my journey, like thinking different, think differently from Joe cells, and I almost had to, you know, turn my brain. 180 degrees to understand these cells and to get to know them and, um, you know, um, be productive in this area. So, um, you know, uh, before I go uh, again in my, um, the part of my talk, I want to give you an update on the, um, uh, you know, what are these cells, the iPSCs and DSCs? They both are pluripotent cells but there is a major difference between them that the iPSCs derive from an isomatic cell, whereas the ESCs, from its name, they derive from the embryonic stem cells. The iPSCs, uh, it's a revolutionary um, uh, invention from Dr. Yamanaka and colleagues. Uh, only back in 2006, they discovered that by uh, introducing for transcription factors, you can uh, convert any um, mature cell to a pluripotent cell, and you can differentiate them into many various cell types. Obviously, that uh, discovery um, not only rewarded him with a Nobel Prize, but it opened up the entire field of regenerative medicine to its enormous possibility. So I'll be covering the differences that these uh, pluripotent stem cells have um, when it comes to the in context of clonal outgrowth from single cells. So in my next slide here, I'll be covering um, about the outline, the presentation on the um, the um, you know this is the uh, modest outline of what I'll be covering in this um, talk. I'll be introducing you to the uh, clone select uh, single cell printer, a general workflow, the ease and difficulties of the single cell printing and clonal outgrowth, the differences in outgrowth efficiencies between the IPSC and ESC. Obviously, I'll touch base on the monoclonality assessment and I'll talk about the clonal characterization as well. So um, this is actually, um, it shows um, a, a video um, from my um, own uh, you know, experiment. And I apologize for the background noise. This is coming out of um, uh, the blower in, in inside of a BSC. Um, what I want you to, uh, you know, pay attention in this slide that, um, you know, this this uh, clone select, uh, the single cell printer, is um, a very simple design. This is a microfluidics based um, based system, and um, also uh, it, it is, um, you know, it has two cameras here as it moves and dispenses cells from well to well. And each of those images actually um, are. are Cell printed, printed cells actually generate a, um, you know, five images, as you can see here at the bottom, left bottom corner of the cells. And the fourth image actually captures the cell that is going to be, um, you know, dropped, uh, into, into the well. 
it's a very simple design and um, it's uh, the no no high energy lasers are involved in this model and it's as gentle as hand pipetting and it doesn't require any high highly skilled professional to operate the system anyone uh, trained with the system can operate it and do the single cell printing and the dispensing volume is as little as 200 picoliter only and that doesn't actually create any waste or anything it gets just sucked out um, and you know diminishes uh, sucked out by air and what I really want to emphasize is the exclusion criteria that it um, uh, applies in the in, in printing of the cells, and that actually based on the shape size access ratio of the cells, and which are very very important, and adds really high quality in the printed cells, and that actually ends up being uh, you know growing up and. Um, uh, and you, you get your plenty of cells to characterize and get the you know very clone that uh, you uh, hope for. So um, this is actually a slide uh, that outlines um, you know um, a very simplistic workflow that you can start with. Um, any cell population, it can be your parental cell if you want to clone out something out of it, or it can be an engineered cell that you want to, you know, engineer to, um, you know, um, to to make the cells of any desired prop property that you would wish. So it can be anything, but obviously the cells that you print and that grows out into colony, um, you want to screen them with a battery of genotypic phenotypic um, assays. And this is actually a very, very critical step. And that happens only after you expand your cell population from uh, 96 well into 24 to 6 well and um, even into larger vessel size. But once you, you know, have a um, subset of population that you like, obviously at the end of your characterization, you'd like to uh, make sure that they are pluripotent and they can differentiate into any cell type that you desire um, them to be. So uh, moving on, this is actually, um, you know, a snapshot from um, our uh, one of our very first experiment where we um, you know um, made a cell suspension put it in the cartridge and wanted to print out um, wanted to print like you know five different 96 well plates and uh, what you can see here there is a decline in the colony outgrowth efficiency the y-axis represents the colony outgrowth in each 96 well plate that we printed in and I like to mention here that um, one of the, the com consumables here in this process, those little cartridges, they are actually quite expensive. And that's something we wanted to make sure that we don't waste and, you know, we get the, the most out of the worth of our, you know, expenditure. Um, so obviously we see that there is something wrong in our experimental design right here, that there is a steady drop in the um, colony outgrowth efficiency when we go from plate one or two and down to um, number five. But however, um, you know, the outgrowth efficiency overall for these IPSC cells in this experiment was um, really uh, beyond my expectations. Because coming from Joe background, I know how difficult it can be sometimes to grow those cells from single cells. However, the being the Cho cells being very robust, even then, it's, it's, it can be challenging. However, if we just average the outgrowth efficiency here, uh, which shows with the uh, you know dark green bar to the right of the chart, and um, that's the average that is still hitting like around 40%. And overall, you know, I can only I could only be um, I'm pleased with this, uh, the outcome of this experiment. Moving on, when we actually um, tried the same uh, experiment um, setup uh, for the um, for IPSCs in SCF condition, the SCF uh, stands for the animal component free condition because this is highly essential when uh, and becoming more and more critical because as we develop our cell therapy products for human um, um, therapeutics, we need to have processes um, entirely animal component free. But as you can see here, that there is a sharp decline 
in the colony outgrowth efficiency when the same cells were um, pushed to grow in animal component or xeno uh, free condition and xeno free condition. And like I just showed again, there is a drop in the colony outgrowth efficiency from plate one into plate four. And um, there were like, you know, for each each of these conditions, I tried to plate like five plates per condition, but in, in case of the uh, condition one and two, there were no outgrowth for um, plate four and five. So obviously it shows that there is a problem in our experiment setup. Moving on, um, I was actually um, then uh, go into the you know the back end of the data that was collected, and we could see that as we moved from plate one to plate four, that there is a um, drop in the colony outgrowth efficiency. However, the purple bars show that there is a uh, an increase in in time in plating. Uh, time. So that means, so, and I, I, I should actually um, mention here that um, the cartridges that are used for this technology are very, very tiny. You only um, can load like 70 microliters, 70, 75 microliters of your cell suspension and made at about 1 uh, million per cell, uh, cell density. But however, uh, it normally takes about two to five minutes to print one, uh, you know, 96 well plate. But as time goes, and the cells being in that, um, you know, uh, protein free medium, so which is just, you know, more PBS in this case, because of the size, tiny size of the cubits, um, you know, it's, it's uh, desirable uh, to stay away from the bubbles for efficient cell printing. And so that is why we use only one XPBS, obviously with, uh, in presence of the rock inhibitors to uh, keep the cells live. However, um, you know, the cells, uh, the cell viability uh, drops. But um, for most part of our work process, we were actually, you know, staying uh, focus to first two plates only, but uh, later on we could overcome this challenge by just replenishing the cell suspension with fresh cell suspension, and that way um, you know um, you can um, plate uh, up to ten plates. I mean that's the max we went to. You, you may be able to do even more. So that's actually a um, you know an important point for the um, the cell printing I wanted to um, mention uh, in this talk. So moving on, um, as we um, so um, this um, chart actually summarizes uh, about what I just presented about the differences in the colony outgrowth efficiency between the, um, you know, the stemplex matrigel condition, which is very, very permissive for any iPS cell line, most of the iPS cell lines. And um, however, when we go from the stemplex to any of the SEF condition, there is a struggle. The cells actually, you know, do not want to grow in those conditions. And this is an area that I want to highlight that the field you know, uh, as scientists, we need to pay more attention. I'm sure um, there is work going on around this area and we'll get solution to this, um, you know, very imp important aspect in coming years. So, um, so in this slide, actually, this is actually a, um, 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 I like to show the the quality of the um, the, the colonies that grew out um, out of those cells that were printed um, in 96 wells, and um, you can you can appreciate that um, they have very um, very much like the you know IPSC morphology with the uh, distinct ages, and they are actually really high quality IPSC that grew out from those uh, single cell printed um, cells in 96 wells. And also I'd like to bring it to your attention that you see the black dots that you see, those are actually some of the apocrotic cells. And that happens when the colonies actually grow out to a, a good size. 
However, I've seen it may differ between IPSC line to IPSC line. However, like if you harvest your cells anywhere between day 8 and day 10, you can actually avoid some of those to happen. And also it is essential at that time point, you know, from day 6 onwards when the colonies actually are big enough to, um, you know, to feed them on a daily basis so that they don't run out of the nutrients and start uh, you know that uh, spontaneous differentiation so it depends on your the robustness of the cell line you're working with but the harvest day uh, kind of varies between day 8 to day 10. However, when we go into the um, you know the, the clones that grow out in the um, um, ACF condition. As you see here, I do not have many images to share with you. Some of them do really, um, you know, see and get the same, um, you know, high quality IPSC um, um, characteristic. But if you if you want to take a look at this, this right bottom corner, that clone actually looks very different and some of them are actually, you know, starting to differentiate um, at, at this very early stage. And if you pay attention to the left bottom corner here, and you can see that there is a very tiny colony. So those, those colonies, you can wait to take them to, you know, attend certain stage before you can harvest, but many cases, they just die out small. So that obviously speaks about the challenge that the cells go through when they get into this animal component free condition. So that speaks for the need for the medium development um, to, to enriched medium, the composition uh, for these cells to grow out in animal component free environment. So this is actually a, um, a slide that shows, um, you know, um, the images, the five images that are captured through the single cell printer. And as I was saying in my uh, previous, um, one of the previous slides, that every single um, uh, well actually captures like five images. And the fourth image contains the image of the cells that um, are deposited in the 96 well. And to, to the right here actually shows the um, IPSC clones, the high quality IPSC clones that grew out of these single cells that are uh, deposited. But if you look at the bottom right corner, very bottom right corner, it has a little bit of a stretched, um, you know, morphology, unlike the other three that are here on this slide. And if we actually go back and take a closer look at the, um, within that red circle, you can see that that, that a doublet was printed um, in that particular well, and that actually, you know, gave rise to that stretched colony. That the colony actually is a mixture, came from a mixture of cells. So this is then very, very important aspect that once you get your clones, you characterize them, and then you want to go back and examine these images and make sure that your cell population derived from a single cell and not multiple cells. So then actually, this is actually, um, so now I will start talking about the differences we have into um, between the IPSCs and ESCs. So um, obviously the robustness of the IPSCs to grow from single cell doesn't really reflect, um, you know, as is into the, when we go into the ESCs. The black bars in this case actually shows that um, the outgrowth efficiency for the unengineered platform, so which is always higher than the engineered cells. And uh, isn't for IPSC, it drops from 70% to 40%, which is still, you know, um, considerably high compared to the, when it comes to the point of the ESCs. And you can see, and we tested like two different ESCs in this experiment simultaneously, but one was slightly better than the other. However, it's still actually very, very low. And that truly speaks for some more work that needs to be done um, in this area. But I can uh, just, you know, give you an update by um, modifying some of the cultural conditions and the dissociating reagent. We could steadily bring up this very low efficiency to around work around 20% or so for the engineered cells. 
but obviously, um, you know, as scientists in the field, uh, we like to make improvements in this area. So then when we hit this problem, and um, uh, I obviously, you know, when you have a timeline looming in your um, uh, on, on you, so you have to you know get your things going, and you have to screen large number of clones um, to get your desired population. So uh, uh, limiting dilution is um, you know one way you can do it. Obviously, you sure can. And um, and these cells are actually they grow fairly well if you just have them in 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 just like 50 cells per ml or um, 100 cells per ml in a, um, you know, in any size of um, plates, 6 cell plates, 10 centimeter plates, omni plates, or anything, you just name it. The cross feeding do help and you can get your cells um, forming the clones. And here in this case, we were actually, um, you know, it's a proof of concept um, study that we're running and we ourselves were expressing the GFP. And you see, you can see that the, some of these highly, you know, bright clones are fairly sparse, whereas some of those actually are fairly close to, together. Obviously, you would not, you know, pick the ones that are, um, you know, crossed out with red, but you, you easily can scoop the ones that are out there and you can get, you know, fill in your 96 soil plate with a ton of clones. But one caveat I found in this way um, that you can actually save your campaign and meet your timeline, but definitely you cannot establish the traceability of your clone that it derived from a single cell. And often when we um, like to make our cell therapy products for human therapeutics and for regulatory submission, this is essential for us to prove that our cell therapy product is um, is homogeneous and it came homogeneous in its characteristic and it came from a single cell source. So obviously then, you know, the single cell printer um, comes handy in that case as well. So here actually now, um, I just, uh, you know, the technology that I present to you um, using the um, single cell printer. Um, so we, we added another layer of technology here and that is the imagery part of it. So the ES cells are, um, unlike the CHO cells or T cells, they are not perfectly round cells. They can be irregular and they're very sticky as well. Even though we are getting the images, like five images that you get, and you can actually you know, say that you, you do have single, one cell printed, but if what if like, you know, there are two cells just have the same morphology and access ratio and roundness, and they're just one behind the other. And instead of one cell, you print the two cells. So we wanted to make sure that our cells are really printed as single cells. And that's why this um, clone selective measure actually uh, came very handy to 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 develop our process, and here actually to the right, I can show you that you can capture um, that two cells were printed and the images were captured like um, you know uh, 24 hours um, later than the cell printing. And that's why you, you can see that your printed cell actually divided overnight. And these cells have a uh, doubling time of 20, 24 hours. And those two cells that you see here actually, you know, grew later on. And within 10 days, they formed this beautiful, um, um, you know, um, GFP expressing colony in this case. So um, and so that's that's what I want to stress here that for uh, the monoclonality establishing the monoclonality we we truly added this um, clone selective measure in our work work um, flow to make sure that we are printing you know a single cells are printed in our 96 volt plate and I like to mention that here that um, the new generation of the clone selective measures actually they have improved optics and. Um, you, you really can, uh, you know, visualize single cells that are printed in, on the matrix. And um, to the top left corner, it's, a, uh, it's, it's an image of an F site that's a new addition to our workflow. And I'm excited to get, you know, um, start working with it uh, for our um, 
stem cell therapy, um, you know, Tim. And uh, moving on, it uh, actually, as you can see here, it may sound like, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's a simple process and you really um, can print cells in single cells. However, um, you know, it may not be as easy as it sounds. And it took me actually um, five uh, campaigns to come to this point and capture uh, single cell images. And that is because of the timing. The timing sense that if you wait too long, then your cells start dividing and you miss this opportunity. If you centrifuge your plate after cell printing, you lose the cell viability and you get like very little colony outgrowth. But then actually it's the best that if you can allow the cells to settle down down and um, in the uh, by gravity and then you come back and you know image your plate by clone select imager and then you can actually you know really detect the single cells on the matrix even if you cannot detect the you know, day of your cell printing but if you use barcodes on your plates and you image your plates few you know several days during between your cell printing and the harvest day of day 10 or 12, then actually the, the, the software recognizes your plate and it actually you know, um, draws a growth curve. So once you have a mature colony grow out and then you can actually trace back and get the images of the single cell, it is a really nice technology. I enjoy it myself discovering that well, my clone came came from a single cell and obviously you know it takes some expertise to get to this you know precision of the imaging and um, at the end with the improved uh, optics uh, the CSI actually adds tremendous value to the monoclonality assurance in our ESC IPSC workflow. And uh, so once you get the cells that are printed and you make sure that they are uh, pluripotent, then obviously uh, you, uh, they are monoclonal, but obviously you want to make sure that they are genotypically um, you know, stable. To the left here, actually I'm showing a G-banding karyotype of one of the clones. We have actually using this method, we used, uh, we generated like hundreds of clones and we have tremendous amount of data that shows that the cells that come out of these um, you know single cell printer are of very high quality and um, they are genotypically stable just not at the beginning and they actually go through uh, I mean even for many generations and they are highly pluripotent you can differentiate them into the three um, germ layers like the endoderm mesoderm ectoderm here I have the images from uh, the cells that are printed by a uh, single cell printer and differentiated them into different um, germ layers and stained them for uh, the germ layer specific markers and you can see the beautiful luminous staining of those and this is not that I hope you can appreciate that the same GP expressing clone that I was uh, mentioning in my um, you know previous slide they're actually um, displayed here as well and I was able to push them to differentiate them into um, a uh, you know beating cardiomyocyte so um, this is a, a very, very fulfilling moment for me for validating this technology for in the ESC and IPSC workspace. And uh, we are actually um, uh, routinely using it uh, for um, in our in our workflow uh, for the ESC and IPSC space. And in the end, actually, I'll just summarize um, uh, our work here. And I'd like to uh, emphasize the fact that the uh, clone select uh, single cell printer is an effective tool for <clears throat> single cell isolation of the IPSC and ESCs and combination of the clone select imager and the clone select pin printer offers the confirmation of the monoclonality assessment and the cells that are printed um, using the clone uh, select um, single cell printer is of very high quality and um, they are of uh, they are pluripotent and they can be differentiated into many various cell types. You 
you just to name it. I just showed, showed you uh, an example of the cardiomyocyte, between cardiomyocyte, but you can differentiate them into renal cells and the kidney cells, liver cells, nerve cells, muscle cells, any cells, a cell type that you name it. But I, at the end, I do, I do like to emphasize that we need to do more work um, in the field to further optimize the outgrowth efficiency uh, for the uh, ESC and IPSs in the animal com component free environment so that uh, we can bring um, the, uh, you know, um, therapies, uh, regenerative um, cell therapy products um, to the benefit of the patients down the road. And um, um, this is actually um, my big thank you to the big team of people that helped in um, from to to validate this technology and this is a very very diverse group um, that uh, I'm, I'm extremely thankful of and um, also I like to thank our external collaborators in Weissel Research Institute we, we wanted to make sure that the cells that are printed are genotypically stable and they are genotypically, um, you know, their karyotypes are normal. So um, uh, we, are, we are tremendously thankful for providing very high quality data from Weissel research scientists from Sumagen uh, for some of the uh, validating some of the gene edited cell lines and a big thanks to um, uh, molecular devices for getting these uh, you know, technologies um, 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 to us. And I'll call out Paula and Joe, um, uh, you know, that uh, tremendously um, indebted to them. Um, Joe actually maintains, uh, uh, he's a, an engineer and we work closely with, he maintains the systems in a very pristine condition that they perform. He makes sure that they perform at close to 100%. And uh, so that we do not have, you know, any frustration growing growing and uh, you know we get the very efficient cell printing and we are really really pleased with the quality we get and Paula is actually she's tireless in teaching this very intricate um, you know technology and um, I'm indebted to her that you know I could learn and effectively use this technology to to our process and um, I'm immensely thankful also to our AZ cell therapy leadership team for bringing these technologies to us so that we can efficiently generate therapies for um, for our patients. And uh, last but not least, um, I will thank uh, all of you who joined, who could join this webinar, and I'll take any questions that you may have, um, and I'll try my best to address your questions. Thank you all. Thank you, Kargi, for your informative presentation. We will now start the live Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have a question you would like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen, and we'll answer as many questions as we have time for. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so our first question is, lifting IPSC cells can be a bit tricky. Do you have any techniques you may share regarding best practices for lifting cells? Um, yes, uh, I think it is a very relevant and tricky question. And um, having these cells, uh, you know, um, very translucent in appearance, it's sometimes difficult. So, and um, what I like to, uh, you know, emphasize on the fact that um, you can use uh, any dissociation reagent like the acutase or uh, versine or uh, any any reagent, but what I prefer myself to use um, is EDTF, uh, the enzyme-free um, reagent, because oftentimes for you know what I faced, that um, the cells may lose their attachment, uh, you know, um, attach, uh, the, the, they may become like spontaneously loose and may not want to attach at this very early stage of the colony forming stage. So um, you can actually use, you know, any DTA free um, um, reagent. And once you, you know, do it, if you if you hold your plate against the um, the light, you can see the colony, which is which is tricky, I admit. But uh, nevertheless, what you can do is like, you know, if you're not sure if you are collecting a, you know, a big large number of cells, 
you can at the very least add some media, put the cell uh, source split back to the uh, you know incubator. Next, you can come back and check your um, you know recovery. And then, if you are not satisfied with your recovery, you can go back and you know uh, use your plate again. So that's how you can get a really, really you know higher, highly efficient um, cell recovery. Okay, thank you. Okay, our next question. Typically, after printing a single cell, how frequently do you feed them? Um, obviously, um, like if you are using rock inhibitor in your, um, um, you know, a medium during cell printing, um, you would want to remove the rock inhibitor and do a complete medium exchange um, 24 hours later. Um, your cell printing, um, but uh, for, to replenish them uh, with the right nutrients, um, you can skip a couple of days, and I typically do like day three, day five, and from day six onwards, I feed them, um, you know, um, on a daily basis, so that if if some of the clones are growing faster than expected, so that you might want to make sure that they don't run out of the nutrients growing in that little, you know, pretty tight condition. So that, you know, that, that typically helps. Okay, thank you. Now, what percent of your single cells grow out to single colonies? It depends on the, um, uh, you know, um, whether you're using IPSC or ESC. Obviously, um, you can see a... Um, you know, higher outgrowth efficiency of our IPSCs, uh, which can go like anywhere between 40 to 70 percent. However, for ESC, that percentage is fairly low. So it's uh, the highest we've got is around 20 percent, I would think. So, um, you know, there is a, there is a challenge that lies for the ESCs to grow out at um, high high efficiency. Thank you, Gargi. We have time for one last question. Have you recognized a cost savings in the amount of consumables used compared to traditional limiting dilution? Um, this is a very good question, and um, as I was covering, um, you know, in my during my talk, that um, limiting dilution works very well for these cells, but there is no traceability uh, of your, um, you know, for for you to confirm that your. Uh, cell product came from uh, single cells. So for the, uh, you know, benefit of, of your product and the life of the product, um, you know, even though the cartridges are a little expensive, but it is worth using this technology and validate that your, you know, your cell therapy product that, um, you know, if the monoclonal monoclonality assurance is um, important uh, for your downstream application. So, you know, I do recognize there is a cost associated with it, but it's all worth it. Thank you, Kargi. Do you have any final comments for our audience before we go today? Well, um, obviously, I'm thankful to everyone who could join um, uh, this webinar, um, you know, taking the time out of their busy schedule. I'm immensely thankful to them, and um, I really appreciate, um, you know, the field moving so fast, and we are actually getting the technologies, um, you know, um, uh, moving, uh, uh, you know, at the same or even faster pace and getting these uh, valuable technologies um, available to the researchers so that we can make uh, life-changing medicine for the patients in the regenerative uh, medicine space. A big thanks to you all. Well, thank you again, Gargi Roy, for your time today. And we would also like to thank LabRoots and our sponsor, Molecular Devices, for underwriting today's educational webcast. Before we go, I'd like to thank the audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions, questions we did not have time for today and those submitted during the on-demand period will be addressed by our speaker via the contact information you provided at the time of registration. This webcast can be viewed on demand. LabRoots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Until next time, goodbye.